for the word today, God, that will come forth with grace and truth. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. 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 We bless you, God. We bless your name, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Bless your name. Hallelujah. You are worthy, Jesus. Worthy is your name. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. We honor you. We bless you. We praise your holy name, O oh God. Hallelujah. Lord, we lift you up. We magnify your name. Oh, God, we bless you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for saying that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Oh, God, what a wonderful message, oh, Lord. We thank you, God, for your care and your concern for our lives, oh, God, knowing that nothing, nothing can come against what you have made us to be, oh, God. Nothing can come against us, oh, God. Nothing can separate us from your love, Father. So we thank you for your love. We thank you, Lord, for your grace. We thank you, Lord, for your authority. God, we thank you for, most of all, for your protection, mm -hmm. Lord. And also, we thank you for the airship, Lord God. You are a father to us. You are a husband to us. God, we thank you for all the things you do. God, keeping and caring for us, oh God. And we bless your name for that. We thank you for that song. Give God a great hand clap today. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. So one thing I just want to thank God for today, we thank you for being here again this week with us. Uh, with Life Nation, we're here again uh, in Culpeper here in Virginia, right, sharing the word of the Lord. I just want to say that this series that God has been given to us has been so, so exciting to me. Uh, I know if you're here the last couple of weeks, you heard us talk about the message. The title of it is The Gateway of Creativity, A Reflection of the Excellence of God. So one thing I will say is that even in studying this thing, even in hearing what God's been saying, it's really given me a greater resolve to just enjoy who I am in the Lord, okay? We have to realize that there are so many things going on in the earth today. There are so many betrayals. There are so many uh, uh, wars and fighting factions. There are so much terror in the earth, so much violence. But the one thing we know is that our God is always with us, always cares for us, and he made us his excellence in the earth, praise God. He made a way for us. He made an excellent way through Jesus Christ. Okay, it's not about notes today, but let me get back to my notes, praise the Lord. Like last week, we talked about, you know, we talked about the creativity of God, how Eden, it being the mountain of God, where God dwelled, and where he created great and majestic things uh, around his throne. Uh, we talked about that. We talked about Eden on earth and how great Eden is on earth, the greatness of God, how it just, you have a heavenly realm of Eden and you have an earthly realm he developed as Eden that he wanted us to be able to take care of, praise God. So we talked about that, um, you know, how Lucifer in his pre-fallen state prior to becoming a, a demonic entity, uh, prior to being an enemy of God, when he was really in love with the Lord, how he managed to be created by God in the, majest in the majestic nature of how he was created. It's very powerful. It is amazingly powerful. So one thing we have to look at today, one thing we have to look at today is realize that, like I said, he's ousted out of the kingdom of heaven. He's ousted. He, he has no inheritance. He has no, even in the greatness of how he was created, he was stripped and he was cast out of heaven. Okay, so that left a vacancy in heaven. You know, so one thing we're, we're going to talk about today, what that vacancy is in heaven. Think about it. Think about it. You know, when, like we talked about last week, and if you here get the notes or watch the videos from the previous occasions, you have to realize that the way he made Lucifer with all those components as we talked about last week, you know, the, just the work ethic of God is amazing. It's quite amazing to see just how much he would do from the very thought of his mind and how he would create something so excellent in a living, breathing creature, praise God. So anyway, like, let's look at it here. Uh, if you turn your Bibles to Genesis chapter 1, we're going to go through it. And today we're focusing on, again, when Lucifer was evicted from heaven, there became a vacancy. And we're talking about what's filling that vacancy now. Okay? Amen. Look, look. in the beginning, God prepared, formed, fashioned, 
and created the heavens and the earth. Okay? Now we know that. We talked about that. But let's go back down to verse 27. It says, now look at this. So God created man in his own image. In the image and likeness of God, he created them. Him. Male and female, he created them. So we talked about a reflection of God's excellence. It's very simple here in his creation. He created, okay, man. That's the creativity of God. And that's the gateway of God, mankind in the earth. The image and the reflection, the very character of God is who mankind is. That's what he made man for. God made man to be the replacement of what was in heaven referred to as Lucifer, the worshiper, praise God. So when we look at it there, you know, like we talked about, and I'll share again, when you look at God's work ethic, when God is a creative God, when you look at what he does, even in his most intimate pre-earth creations, Eden, you know, the delightful mountain of God, we see his work ethic encompasses full measures. I mean, there's exact completeness. There's wisdom and perfection in God. You see, there's beauty, there's precious, and there's anointing in what he does. So when he look at it, when God, like he spoke everything else. You look at Genesis, you go through it, you see how he spoke. He said, let there be light. He said, let there be a heavens. Let there be a, a, a split. You know, let there be a sea. Let there be all these things. And those were things that he spoke of. The two things he actually created was the earth and he created man. Which means that he actually didn't just speak it. Like we know that the mind of God speaks and things are formed. But when you talk about he created and formed man, that means he put his personal effect onto what he created. You see, it's one thing to dictate something. You now, it's one thing to make a decree. Like a king, he makes a decree. A king speaks. A king, he says something. He declares. He decrees things. But what we have to understand is that those things come into action. The angels or the servants or the people, like King Solomon, he decreed the building of the temple and the building of his house. And there were many, many people there that worked in excellence to carry out the character of what he decreed. You see, that's one thing. And that's how it was when God did, when he created, you know, the, the uh, creation as we know of in the Genesis 1. But when he says he forms, when he creates and he forms, he doesn't just speak it. He actually gets in position. He gets in position. He sets himself in a method and in a way to carry out the great things that he was putting forth in his work ethic. He carries those things out. He carries those things out. So in other words, it's like, for instance, if I say it, it's one thing to decree a thing. It's another thing when you actually take your hands, place your hands on something, put your hands, you form and you craft and you think about God's hands. The Bible talks about the hands of God, how he puts his hands on something. He forms, he shapes, he sets. You know, think about a good carpenter, how, I mean, Jesus being a carpenter, you got to put your hands to the work. You know, you just don't decree a building, you actually put your hands to the work to craft it. You see? And that's what it's like with God's work ethic with man. He made it, he created, he formed. So it's a great thing that we look at, okay? And let me just tell you something here, you know, as I slow down a little bit. You know, we look at the earth, okay? We know that in the earth there was, you know, all those things of earth. Look at the earth we have now. I mean, it's not as good as it was back then, okay? But you look at the flowers of the field, you look at the trees, you look at the sky, you look at the firmament, and take one step further, even before God created this earth that we live upon, he created galaxies. Galaxies. I mean, you look at it, scientists today are just now beginning to understand just how vast the galaxy is, okay? And this is the point I want to make. There are like over... And they say in science, the top scientists now, astrophysicists and things of that nature, they say there are like a hundred billion galaxies in the universe. One hundred billion. And, and the reason they say a hundred billion 
it's still not an accurate figure. Figure. It's a hundred billion that they are able to see. Okay? Now look at this. They say that with the Hubble telescope and those different things they have in science that have been developed, you know, they say as they advance in their technology and their ability to see the universe and the galaxies, they anticipate that that may be another 200 billion galaxies out there. So we think about it, 300 billion galaxies. Look at how vast that is. And in all of that galaxy, in all of that splendor, in all of those stars out there, in all of that creation of God, that's before he even made Earth. So in all of those galaxies, let's say 300 billion galaxies, he decided that in all of this vastness of his presence, of all the things that ever existed that came from his very being, that he saw fit to create a little itsy bitsy earth in the midst of all of those galaxies to put man his most prized possession on it. That's how much value we have in God. I mean, God blew me away with this. It's like, of all of the galaxies out there, of all of the things that he has created, of all of the stars, of the sun, you know, he created this earth and put man on earth. Isn't that amazing, praise God? It's quite amazing. Amen. It's quite amazing. Look at this verse. Uh, let's go to this next scripture here. Let's go to Psalm chapter 8, all right? Very common passage of scripture. Very common passage of scripture, but I want to go into a little bit. It says um, in verse 1, I'm reading from the Amplified, O Lord, our Lord, how excellent, majestic, and glorious is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory on or above the heavens. So look at this here. Even as a psalmist David, who was a priest, a prophet, and a king, he says this one thing here. His glory is above the heavens. So God created the heavens and the earth, meaning the sky that's around us and the universe and all those things. But we have to realize his glory is even greater than the heavens that we can see and the ones we can't even see in the galaxies that we're talking about. How excellent and majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens, which means that even, you know, we, the, his name is great in earth that he created, but even in all of the galaxies of the heavenly realms that exist, that man can even figure out that even exists now, God's name and his glory is above all of that. That's powerful to me. I mean, if you're a, I'm a scientific guy. I like science. I'm a designer. But when you think about the vastness of our galaxies and how God is beyond and greater and more majestic than anything there is, I mean, I, think, I like, um, there's one preacher down in, uh, in, in Georgia that I really like. He did a series called Symphony. And he went in and he had the telescopes and he had the, the various things and begin to hear the sounds that are in the galaxies. Okay, and the different sounds from different stars, when you put it together, they make music. And the music they make is the worship unto God. The sounds they make is worship unto God. These are galaxies and stars making sounds that give God honor. Which means that all galaxies, even like we saw here, over 100 billion galaxies, over 300 billion galaxies, if you look at it, that they all sit there and they submit themselves in worship to God who is above them all. Isn't that great? Isn't that great? Okay, in verse 2 Amen. it says, Out of the mouths of babes and unweaned infants you have established strength because of your foes. You might that you might silence the enemy and the avenger. That's not what I wanted, but let me go to verse 3. It says, when I view and consider, this is David speaking, Prophet David, King David speaking, when I view and consider your heavens, 
the work of your fingers. He's talking about the galaxies right there. The moon and the stars, which you have ordained and established. Like we talked about, he established those things. In all of this here, it says, when I consider the heavens, all the galaxies, the work of your fingers, your handiworks, everything you've done in the earth, the moon and the stars, which you have ordained and established, what? It said, verse 4, it says, what is man that you are mindful of him? 